Hi guys, my name is Dr. Rocker and this channel is all about comic book drawings. And usually when you want to add shadings to your comic book drawing, you do strong blacks and then use hatching lines to come out of the strong blacks. So from far away you have a nice shading. Also here you can see it's just lines, a million lines. But today my friends I will show you how to use pencil shadings for an even more realistic look in your comic book drawings. So let's get a piece of paper. In order to show you this properly, I need a nice sketch. The sketch should be very light, so I will use a 2H pencil for this one. But first I will make him a little bit thicker with these tattoo grip tape. Blue camouflage on blue pencil. This way I should have more pencil control. And it's not as exhausting. Which means I'm all set for doing a sketch. But before I begin, please make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. So you won't miss out on any of my future videos. And also watch the whole video because there will be a ton of tips and tricks in there. But now, let's draw. This is way too stiff. Ah. Okay people, I'm done with the sketch. As you should be able to recognize now, I drew the Batman. As you can see, this drawing is still very light. And although I want to use pencil shadings instead of hatching and cross hatching, I still will trace the most important lines with my 0.2 fine liner from Micron here. If you are pursuing a completely realistic look, you should leave this part out and go straight into the shading with the pencil. But I still want to have a comic book feel, you know what I mean? A little bit of line weight and a contrast from lines to shadings. So let's do these lines real quick. Now we have a defined line drawing, which means it's time to do some shadings. But first, some basics. To do proper shadings, we will use a 2B pencil. I will use my 2B mines because I want to use my prepared pencil like this one. You can use a pencil like this, it's absolutely the same, but with this one you can prepare your grip like this so you have better control and it's not as exhausting. But whatever you prefer or whatever you have. We also will need some erasers. If you have one of these, that would be perfect because with these ones we can do effects and also erase out some small details like veins. And these tools are great for smudging the pencil drawing. But we will come to those later. When you use a softer pencil, you have to approach with way more feeling than when using a hard one. But you will see all you need is a 2B pencil because you can do a great variety from very dark to very light. It's working perfectly. As you can see here, I used a lot of pressure in the beginning and then faded out. And to soften up this shading, I will use this tool now and use a lot of pressure actually. And then come out of the shading. Look, I can extend it way further with this one. That's a nice shading right there. But you don't have to start off with a lot of pressure. You can also use layers like there. I'm just using this one very gently and then I go in for the second layer and use a little bit more pressure and then again and you can leave it like that maybe smudge it and after smudging you can go in again if you want it darker that's the great thing about pencils you can go back and forth quite often and if you still want to achieve a dark shading like this one, you can still go in with more pressure and it will be the same kind of darkness. And you can ease out with a pencil or just use this thing here. And when you use this smudging tool already, you can draw with it. You can just use this one, you see? 
It's a nice shading actually. And then you can still go ahead and darken it up with the pencil. So I think you know what I mean. And what's also extra nice when using the pencil, you can erase everything. That's pretty cool. Look, let's say we want to do a vein right here. Just do this and then add some more shadow of the, from the vein. And we would have a great vein. Just like that. Now let's make another shading real quick. And if you want to smudge it and you don't have one of these, you can use this thing right here. Works pretty good as well. Or you can just use your finger. Or you can build something with a piece of paper. Very easy. Just roll it like this. That's a bad piece of paper for that, it's too hard. But it will still work. Then you fix it a little bit with the tape. And then you can use this for smudging. Let's try it out. You can see it's working pretty good. And the longer you use it, the better it gets. And it actually fits quite good in the hand like that. Okay, I guess we covered all the ground rules for shading with pencils. So let's put it to work. Okay, so usually here on the rib, for example, there would be some more strong blacks like this. And then there would be some lines which we would use to fade out of. But we want to do it differently today. I will take my soft 2B pencil again and then we will do some real shadings. You see how dark this is? I use a little bit of pressure and then come out of it. And just to make it more pretty, I will smudge it right away. Go in again with the pencil to make a hard edge. Smudge it again and then use this one because there is no smudging needed. And thus we have a really nice shading. As you can see right here, the shading doesn't need to be perfect because it will be smudged anyway. And this is a bigger area, so I can use my finger. And it works pretty well. And for the smaller one, I will go in with this one because with this one I can use more pressure and be more on point. So let's smudge it a little bit, mixing it up with my finger. And now I go in with the pencil again and make sure that I come out of the strong blacks better because there's a line which I don't want to be seen and it needs to get darker anyway. So now I use a little bit more feeling and try to control the pressure until I get the right amount of awesomeness. Go back and forth as much as you like. And here we have a nice shading of the stomach muscle. As always, it's very important to turn the paper around so you feel comfortable doing the shadings. The more often you will go back and forth with those two tools, the nicer the shading will get. What is very lovely is that you can ease in in every shading you want to do because this, for example, needs to be very light. But I will just go ahead and do a very light shading without even using a pencil. Mixing it up with a finger. You can drag some of these to this side when you rub it. And now I can look at it from afar and can decide, oh, maybe just a little, a little bit of some pigments like this. Smudge it again and I guess it's good enough. But I can always come back later if I think it needs to be more dark. That's a big advantage to doing inks. Because when you're doing inks traditionally and you mess up a big area, there's no going back. When you do it digitally, it's not a problem. But like we draw, Without a tablet on paper, we need to be extra careful. 
Also keep in mind not to smudge too much by accident. Turn around the page so your hand will not smudge everything by accident because here in this area there are no pencils laid out yet so I can move around freely in this area and continue with my shading right here without worrying about getting everything smudged. And later you will need to use an extra piece of paper to prevent smudging. You have to sharpen your pencil, flatten your tip on an extra piece of paper because for shadings you need a flat surface just like you can see here if you have good eyes. We are making good progress, almost done. Every now and then you can use an eraser to erase the side of the hand because there will be a lot of lead. And just like that, you're rid of it. Or just go and wash your hands, that's even better. So, let's continue. Okay, here you have all those shadings. You can see it looks pretty cool already, quite realistic. But for me, there are not enough details. So I will fool around and add some small details and maybe even a few hatching lines. And for that, I will still use my 2B pencil. The green camouflage one. And you can leave it like that, like I just said. It's really good enough. But I don't like it when, it's, when it looks too clean. So I will just add some confusion here and there. Okay my friends, that's about what I had in mind and what I wanted to show you. How to shade your comic book drawing with a soft pencil. But we will not stop here. I want to try how this works now when I color it with the iPad. So let's just go ahead and do that. Because I think this will be done fairly quickly now. So let's try it out. In order to do this properly, we need to add an extra layer down here and then we go right here on the main layer and do this one. And when we color this piece, you can see it's already shaded. So let's go. And here we go, fully colored in no time. This was an interesting experience, because usually you color the pieces only done by inks. But with the iPad Pro and Procreate, you really can color this easily. Looks pretty neat. So here's the penciled version again, which I later transformed to this one. If you compare it to this four drawing I did not long ago, you can see this is really hard, hard shadows. It's really cool and it has more strength. But this on the other hand is way softer and looks a bit more realistic. But still quite colorful. Okay people, I hope you enjoyed the ride. And I hope you have been able to learn a thing or two. And if you like Superman, you probably should check out this video where I drew a Superman in the style of Jim Lee and also teach you about how to draw like Jim Lee. So check it out, I will see you there in a minute. But first, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications and tell all your friends and family about my channel so we can grow! But now I will see you right there.